until I ripped that off so I could see the wiring. But look at that wiring mess up in here. I did leave plenty of extra wire and wire loom. We'll fix that up where it doesn't look so bad. But we're getting closer now. Closer and closer. We're also going to have to pull off the air conditioner soon. Yeah. We are going to get that big chunk of wire out, which is... Where is that big chunk of wire coming? Oh yeah, that's these wires here. They're going to come out soon. So, found out what this thing is. Sorry for the grainy look of it. It's getting dark here, so it's getting harder to see. This thing is the wigwag. This is what makes the headlights flash from one side to the other. I'm going to cut it out now, and we'll trace the wires down later. It's It actually says on here, high beam left, high beam right. The only reason I know is because I tested the system and I noticed that the lights changed too. So we're going to trace that down and remove it from the uh, wiring harness itself in the system of itself. Um, and just cut it out like a lot of things we're going to delete, but uh, we'll keep it and play with it later. So I did all that wiring earlier, and it's a complete mess back there, but I want to see if this thing will run. I just got one battery hooked up, so we're going to see if we can get it to start. Yay! We didn't mess up any wiring. Yay! I got to see if the brake lights and all that works too now. I just want to know. Oh. We have no brake lights or turn signals. I think I know the problem though. I'll mess with that here in a little while. So no bueno on the lights on the back of it. I'm about to go through that and really go through the wiring harness some more and get more of that out. Figure out where it's pulling in and where it's going out at. I thought it was maybe just a bad ground, but apparently there's more than that. But look, you can look there and see the back of the cab. It's kind of interesting. It's huge in here. Hard to believe this is all on a van chassis, right? Golly, this is a good idea. But at least now we know it runs, and that's a good thing. So, having a running vehicle is good. Even though the lights don't work. I was afraid that I was going to tear into it and my electrical wouldn't work on me after the fact. And I was not even having a starting engine, so we're doing good. We'll figure out the lights. It won't take much to figure out the lights, I don't think. Um, and the switch panel. I think I'm going to go... The switch panel is going out of here. I think I'm going to drop a couple switches down here. And I'll figure out how to get that angle just right. And probably do some fiberglassing on there. And I'm thinking about putting a couple switches over here, mainly because I've seen it on some others and it shouldn't be that hard to put a row of switches. So I think I'll put my off-road lights over here. Think forward, left, right, back. Um, probably the outside light here. I'm gonna have a little light outside the cab so I'll probably put it on the very end there. So, and whatever switches are like inside lights, so if my inside lights are on the cab, I can hit a button and kill them along with other lights in here. Um, I might put a master kill switch up here for the back, just because. And what else kind of switches do I need? Also want to, whenever I get around to it, I want to replace this with like a touch screen something, maybe security backup camera thing. Right there, and I might angle it more for me uh, here. 
That way, when I'm sitting here, I get a good angle of the backup camera. So, yeah, we'll get it. All right. As you guys can see, the weather has changed considerably from that one really hot video. We had a cold front come through last night, and it made it cold. Really cold. It went from 90... 100 degrees to 90 degrees down to 57 degrees, which today is 57 degrees. Tomorrow is supposed to bump back up to 80, but it kind of does that at this time of year in Oklahoma. Anyhow, it gives me the opportunity to get stuff laid out for a more proper... Me, Sorry for moving you guys around so much. I can cut some stuff out that I want to cut out. And we need you. Well, I guess you're going to have to hang out on that hand. And we need you. And we got the gloves. Okay. We'll have to get the power cord here in a second. Fit it. Uh, anyhow. Oh, I forgot. Ooh, that was chilly. Anyhow, so we're going to do some grinding. And for lack of a better option, I gotta run power out here. But anyhow, I started bringing up the floor yesterday. Oh, God. They just kind of used whatever they needed to use on the floor to get it together down here. Then we hold that out, and of course, all this is out. I've been doing a lot of studying on. How to build my own circuit boards because I have I like the design of the circuit board they have in here. However, the design is not going to meet my needs. I can make it work, but it has some issues. It needs to be reworked. So I'm learning how to design circuit boards, and we'll probably put a relay panel back in here with the circuit board and all that fun jazz in here in a bit. But the good news about turning a part like this is I get to find all the mice holes and fix them. But the bad news is, like the other day, I thought that this had a bad ground and that's why my lights weren't working. But my lights aren't still not working. So what I was going to do is pull up the floor, which is fine because I'm going to get in here anyhow and replace it. I don't. I was just going to basically strip it down to the frame and everything is going to get modified except for the sides and the, the cabinets. So this is going to save me some space on the cabinets. But um. So we're going to pull up the floor. I'm going to get me, I have me some PEX line, underground uh, PEX pipe, not PEX, but uh, electrical cable wiring uh, pipe out there. And I'm going to run it along here and we're going to figure out the brake lights and the marker lights and get them all working. I'm going to have them routed right to the floor in such a way that they should be um, abrasion resistant while we're doing all this. My goal is to use this um, until I'm doing some major body work as a transport vehicle for all my supplies. So I gotta make it somewhat runnable. Oh, it's cold. And it definitely needs two batteries to start it. Plus, I only need one. But maybe I'll get me another Optima and put in there and see if that helps. Oh, yeah, let's come down more. Um. Oh. Shout out to all my peeps over in Oregon. Hopefully you guys are staying safe from the fires up there. My sister had to uh, abandon her house. I don't know if she's... The fire's going to reach there, but it's getting close enough that they decided it's safer to get away. So uh, hopefully you all in Oregon are staying safe. And hopefully by the time this comes out that this all will be done with and we'll know how good or bad it is. So, anyhow, this, uh, let me run some power out here. Then we'll get the, the grinder going. I'm going to cut some pieces off. It is what it is. And then, yeah, we'll work from there. Uh, I used the skill saw, actually. The battery up school the skill saw to cut the plate, the aluminum plate off. But, uh, yeah, let's get going. Alright, yeah, we're going to make some noise. I'll put you guys on the time lapse here in a little while. With the screen protectors, it's really hard to touch the screen. 
It's going to be 90 degrees yesterday and I can feel my breath today. Isn't that crazy? I think we're going to swap, sorry, I'll swap. We're going to swap to a quick plan B here. I still want to take those out. I should have a socket around here somewhere that fits in those Allen heads, but I don't know where that socket's gone. Uh, yeah, we'll do it like we did the other part, but actually we don't need to go that deep. We just need a little bit of salt on it. Enough to get through the front layer. The rest of it's not going for it. I don't know where my safety goggles are. This one is good. This is not permanently attached to the ground. It has tacks on it, but I think all the tacks have broke off. So, anyhow, I'll make it easier. I'm going to cut a hole in the floor anyways, so I can access the top of the fuel tank later on. If I need in there to access some of the utilities and everything else. Mainly so I can get in there and take care of some stuff. Since I have this off and I'm working in here, I don't imagine I'll be in here again. I'll probably cut some holes around the body mounts there too so I can get in here and do the body mounts. The whole idea of doing an ambulance like this was I could swap it to a different frame later on. So uh, easier I make that to do, the easier it is to do if something happens to the chassis and make this kind of uh, a strong, strong rig. So a couple days ago when it was so wet, I came out here and as you can tell I got the floor up and I found out that there's this Cheating here, they had it tacked well together, but it's all broken. And they had it screwed down somewhat, but the initial floor is, for whatever reason, they put the tack wheels in the floor right at it. They didn't put a, a joint on it. You can kind of see it here. This drops down. It's kind of dangerous. 
So I'm going to come back uh, later on, probably drop a line in there or get me some more uh, sheet aluminum to stick in here and break it at the lines. Then I'm going to come in and cut out all the openings for like the fuel tank access and all the lines that have to come through the top. That way, if I ever have to change it or do work on there or clean out the tank, I can just pull it out the top and not worry about uh, getting in there and dealing with it, which would be preferable. Anyhow, the other day when it was raining, I came out here with a power washer. I have power washed the entire side, inside. And it's taken a couple of days to finally kind of dry out a little bit. I was hoping it would dry out faster. And it seems like it's either warm or it's cold. Cold, cold. It, we had a it was 97 one day, and the next day we had a cold front come through, and it dropped it down to 57 and 40s at night, which is a heck of a change. So, I had a hard time coming out here and working in here, but it's finally warmed up enough and dry enough in here. I can get back to the wiring, and that's what we're going to do today: is continue on the wiring nightmare. But it's very nice that everything is clean. I don't feel that yuckiness all over my hands. And it'll be good to get this out. It'll be good to get this out and get the wiring done however I want to. I got some conduit to run along the floor originally. But because it's, the floor kind of comes up, I'm going to raise the conduit do it up about 4 or 5 inches off the ground. It'll give me room to put insulation in there and keep it high enough and access everything. So that's what I'm gonna do, and you guys can sit there and watch me in the time lapse. I'm going to cut this wire because I don't think it's useful. Um, I don't think I'm going to use it. If I do, I'm going to reattach it. So I'm going to make it so I can easily reattach it, resolder it. When you get a bundle of wires like this, you don't just come in here and cut it straight off. You stagger it. That way, if you ever have to reattach it, you're not going to end up with a big old giant joint right here where you attach them all. So we're going to figure out about here. Move a little bit down, do another one, and let's see, do another one down here, and then stagger it all the way down. I'm going to bring these back, do this one farther back down here, and then make sure you leave enough that you can connect it up later and easily solder it to itself if you need to solder the wire. Yeah, you know, it's staggered, kind of like cutting the hair. I'll try this off too. I don't know if I'm going to use this connection again, but I want to keep it so I can. Just a little note of information. Anyhow, we're making progress.
down here, I decided to cut off all those horrible wiring nightmares, uh, mainly because I'm trying to trace wires down, and I'm cutting out a lot of systems that are going that was in here. I'm gonna do my own. Basically, I got all the wires off the ceiling up there. You can see how nice and clean and clear it is. And the stuff I plan on keeping, I put on the coil on the side of the wall near where it's going to be at. Uh, once I do the rough raise, it's going to change the physical location of a lot of these lights. So I can't leave them hooked up as far as right now, I was leaving them hooked in there to the electrical. Right now, I'm still doing the tear out, and this is also part of the prep of doing the rough raise. Um, just don't know. Anyhow, all these wires was going up and over and down into the box, but you can see them down there, and they're this big giant wiring mess going out that way. And I would just cut them, but I want to reuse some of them, especially the back brake lights, the marker lights, and I want to run also trailer lights to it. But to do that, I got to keep the wire, and I like to keep the wire that has these lovely little. Um, things like this see how it has the words and what it goes to and all that i'd like to keep the wires the same even going through the conduit here which i heated up the brown spots where i heated up with a torch to bend it around the corners to get nice and plastic like and pliable you can bend it and when it cools it holds that shape but the plan on the electrical is i've kind of changed the initial design a little originally i was going to pull these boxes out and put the tub up here but uh there's this spot here that's this big empty spot. I don't have anything there. I think I'm just going to create some sort of bathtub shower that pulls up, folds up, and you take a shower in the middle. And if you happen to be somewhere where you have privacy or are out in the boonies or you get some sort of privacy sheet and want to feel like you're outside, you can open the doors out and feel like you're outside. I uh, don't know if that's going to be the actual happening of it. The other thing is with the floor rays, which is going to put it uh, about right up here. So it's going to be about 16 inches higher, but it cuts out that far box right here. It's still there, it's just the floor is going to be above it. So I can open that up and put a really good sitting chair set up there. So that may be what I do. And uh, toilet's still staying over here to the left. Oh, I gotta stand up. I can't sit down like that forever. Anyhow, so. I'm thinking this cabinet here is big enough and everything's wired enough here. I can use this as my electrical um, compartment for my breakers, my fuses, everything in so I can work on it and have an easy time working it with it. If you ever do electrical and you open it up and there's a wiring nightmare, uh, what they call rat's nest, basically all kinds of wires going which way, no one will want to work on it. So I'm going to create a very nice organized wiring spot which will actually make life a lot easier um, next to it is the old oxygen thing and because I want to have a more I was going to go with a smaller less good filter system but because I want to introduce the air conditioning system from inside here in here kind of thing. I want to have the AC and such in here. I'm going to put, make this some sort of a ducting here that pulls in, basically circulates air and it runs it through the AC that's already in here which pulls from the engine. And I'm hoping to be able to put the AC that has runs off the battery also in line ducting with it. I don't know if that's going to be feasible, but I was thinking about making this one big giant air tube with a HEPA filter, a couple pre-filters in it, and I was going to have it figured out a way where it could pull air from outside or pull air from inside, and I choose, and it'll recirculate the air and give me a really good filter system. Um, the fires up in the Pacific Northwest, because my sister has been dealing with it and having breathing problems, I would like to have a solid... Like, the bus, I just had a 1-inch HEPA filter in there, and it, it did well enough. This one, I want to make it um, true HEPA, which means it filters down to 99.97% of particles, down to 0 0.03 microns. Give you sites, uh, hair, human hair is 100 microns. So it filters down, and that's what you get a true HEPA for, 
It's a high efficiency particle air filter is the actual termination terminology for it and for the longest time it really didn't matter to have true HEPA all I needed to do is allergies but with the virus and everything else going on if you want really good filtration you get a true HEPA filter and you get a carbon filter before that that will take out most chemical smells and chemicals in the air um, it won't be a it'll be a very good filter system but it will not replace if there's bad air in here it's going to filter the bad air it's the same if there's high co2 and all that it's not going to be that kind of filter system you actually need a scuba or a fire fire apparatus that supplies that um i kind of looked at it in the bus at one point but it there's no point to go to that extreme level um, i did the research on it and everything else but there's just really no point to do it um, the bus, this is not going to be sealed up enough. The bus wasn't sealed up enough to do that. It would be nice to have oxygen higher altitude because I have breathing problems. Um, I have uh, a number of allergies that make life a lot harder than it needs to be, but that's neither here nor there. Um, not a big deal. But anyhow, I plan on, I think this will be filter, and I'll also find some way to tie in the outgoing air into the electrical compartment to keep some of that stuff cool. <laughs>